So let's start to describe the rubber elasticity system. So again, we need to think about energetics, thermodynamics, when we change essentially the state of our system. So basically, when we go from an unperturbed state to when we apply actually a mechanical stress on our polymer network. So we're going to assume we have a large number of subchains. Again, what are subchains? Basically, it's just the, these are subchains. The links between essentially our crosslink points. Um, again, they're Gaussian. They have some average end-to-end -end distance. A polymer end-to-end -end distance is just simply the vector that connects these two. These quantities are average quantities. The R not squared is our average mean squared end-to-end -end distance um, effectively here. And you can watch some of the videos that we talk about if you want to actually calculate mean squared distance. So. Um, we're going to also assume that, again, there's going to be some molecular weight associated with each of these subchains, um, and it'll be the same. Again, a, you know, it's a coarse approximation. And given an initial set of chains, the molecular weight of each subchain will decrease um, the degree of, uh, as, the, as uh, will decrease as the degree of crosslink is increasing. So um, basically, as you increase, uh, as we increase the degree of crosslinking, the molecular weight of each subchain will decrease. Makes sense. If I have chains like this, and I put just this point, I've got a lot of molecular weight here. But if I start to put points like this, now each of the subchain has a much lower molecular weight here. All right. When we apply a stress to our system, um, we are going to basically extend the dimensions. So we're going to have a new end-to-end -end distance, R, here. So R, we could assume that this is going to be greater than this, obviously. Um, again. A fine deformation, so the microscopic is equivalent to the whole network. So we could actually just look at single, basically an extension of a single subchain. So um, and extend that. So what we first want to do is look at what's called an extension ratio in the one, two, and three directions. So um, the macroscopic length of our basically system or our network, um, and we could actually describe the extension ratio as these alpha one, two, three. And again, it's just the new length over my initial length. And you see the initial length is all the same because it's the unperturbed network. We're kind of making that key assumption there. Um, you could find the new, basically, the new coordinates by just basically multiplying out here. Again, should make sense. The end-to-end -end distance will just be defined here. And this is our really, I can't emphasize this enough. This is so important. Alpha 1 times alpha 2 times alpha 3 must be equal to 1. Again, we are conserving volume in this system. So the volume has to remain unchanged. The total volume change has to be equal to 0. So the product of alpha 1, alpha 2, alpha 3 must be equal to 1. And that's going to be a critical equation we're going to use to solve a lot of problems. So that's kind of like the math end and describing essentially our system setup. But what about the thermodynamic? What, what's happening to the energy of our system? So. We're going to use our favorite equation here. We can split it into our differential form. This is our usual, but now we're adding on our work term because we are adding some force in our system. We are extending our network. Um, so you can see we can define force as such, the change in the, uh, in the energy of our system as we change the length. So we could rewrite this system, or actually this expression, as um, basically your dh, uh, dhdl up here. So we could just plug this in expression here and we're gonna see the enthalpy of our system how does the enthalpy change how does our entropy change as the length changes so this is where we get into our key 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 assumption as we um, basically the enthalpy change when we change the length of our system is going to be zero this should make sense for most systems so if I take a polymer just like this and I stretch it there shouldn't be any changing in the bonding here. So for most polymer networks, this will be true. Now there's a very famous example, the bond wilbon factor, where that's not the case. Actually, when you pull on the system, you actually expose binding sites and et cetera. But, but anyways, so basically, unlike the last problem where enthalpy or our energy in our system was the key component that actually led to elasticity, here we see that our force, our stress, is directly related to the change in entropy is what leads to elasticity there is going to be a restoring force that's driven by entropy. So there's no change in enthalpy because of our fixed volume assumption and all these other things. Um, no net enthalpy change is very unique for polymers. And again, even if you relax that, again, this, for, this term is going to be the dominant term. So we see this is entropic storing uh, force 
like you know, like force, or it's an entropic spring-like force that is the dominant. It leads to essentially the elastic deformation on our network. So, because our elasticity arises from entropy, we actually have to kind of define our, what is our entropy in our system, and we know that entropy is related to the number of microstates. Number of microstates in the basically new system. System two is going to be our stretch system versus our initial system. So we know we can kind of derive. You could actually look at this. Uh, it's not too important. Um, this is a lot of math in here. So again, this is going to be a number of microstates in the, again, this is undeformed, and then now this is our deformed state. So we could look at the change in entropy, and you can see it looks like this system here this is still a little bit of a mess, but we can, um, we could kind of make some assumptions here. So we could actually pull out some values, and we can say that the, we could actually draw this equivalence plug this back into the system, and then we can substitute that R0 is NL squared, and now we get a very, very, very good expression here. This is also another critical, critical equation. So that's giving you a change in your entropy. So you see as we, you know, if we're, you know, basically, if this ratio is 1, 1, 1, if, if I'm in my undeformed state, what's my change in entropy? 1, 1, 1, 3, 3, 0. But when I increase my system, then this, you, know, you see actually that the term is, you know, the change in entropy is going to be negative, which is not good because we need to plug that back in. Um, we always want to increase our entropy. So the change in entropy is negative, so we're reducing the number of microstates. That makes sense conceptually because as I pull my system apart, it's not able to wiggle here. So finally, we get this expression right here, which is another critical one. So the force is related to the derivative of this change in our entropy as a function of all the different i distances. So one, two, three directions, effectively. So next time, this is a lot of expressions. I'm, I'm proud of you all for sticking with me. Um, but now next time, we're going to actually look at and do an example of uniaxial deformation in a rubber network. So thanks. I'll see you next time. Bye.